Okay, good. Good morning, everyone. So my name is Daniel Reis. Um, I am consultant at uh, Open Source Integrators. I'm a head at the head at, of the European Office for Open Source Integrators. That is a, a US-based um, um, Odoo integrator. And I'm also a longtime contributor for the community. I've been here since, since the beginning. And I, in the last few years, I've also contributed as a board member for the association. And my topic for today is how to contribute to the OCA. So this is my agenda. Uh, I could go straight to slide number four, which is what, meaning how can you contrib actually contribute. Um, I try to ma uh, make things a little bit interesting and give you a bit some more context and discuss a bit who you are, why we are here, um, why does this is important, why we should contribute, and then focus on what exactly each of us can do to contribute to the community. So the first thing to note here is that we're a, a, really a community. We're not a company. So we're not buying and selling services from each other. What the community does, you give and take without uh, expecting uh, anything in return. So, um, when you give something, uh, it's for the benefit of the company. It's not a transaction. You don't expect some immediate reward for what you're giving. And when you, you take from the company, from the, the community, it's the same thing. So you can take it, you take it for free. Uh, you're not expect to be charged something and you just use it and it's okay. And why does this work? This works because every people uh, involved in this social contract actually get benefits. And the thing is, the, um, re the result or the outcomes of behaving this way are bigger than if each one individually just work in individual transactions with, with each other. Uh, the, in, another wor in other words, the cake gets bigger because we behave this way. There's less, and one, it, I think if you go to social sciences, the explanation, it's there's less friction in the relations. Since they're not transactions, well, this give and take is frictionless. It's just, but it's built on trust. When you give, you know that sometime in the future, you'll get back and you'll get more than what you gave. So basically this is how this works. So this is not crazy. Actually, uh, communities have been like this since the beginning, villages work like this. If, if, you, if you ever lived in a small village, that's how it works too. So, <clears throat> um, so moving along, um, so who, okay, let me click here. So who uh, are the people involved? So we have several, we have different, roles, different uh, um, skills available in the community, different kinds of people interested in the community. So for all these people to be full members of the community, uh, we should be able to address all of them, meaning that all of these different roles and skills should be able to get something from the community. And at the same time, they must have opportunities to contribute back to the community. And that takes us to the what each of these can contribute with. So who are the people interested in the community or active in the community? So I separated this in two columns. One I called stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders? Who's, who uh, is interested in that, has interest in this, in the success of the community? Customers, of course. So the uh, end customers, so these are for me as, as a, an integrator, these are my customers, but it's also final customers that participate directly in the, in the community. So we have both cases, but the meaning even directly or indirectly, in my case, my customers benefit indirectly, they 
don't participate directly in the community, they do it through me. Uh, or if you are someone who is implementing and are, is uh, active in your own implementation and participate, then you are participating actively in the community. So customers, uh, arguably, this is the end of the value chain. This is where the actual value is given, right? So at the customer level. So these are the main ones taking benefit from what's done in this community. Next, you have the consultants. These are the professionals like me, the integrators that use the community work to deliver value to their customers and they get some benefit from that. And also we have students and hobbyists. So these can be people still studying and using the community to learn um, or hobbyists who like some of the topics we work with or like the environment the work environment we provide and they they just hang around the community and also takes or maybe they use it for some uh, association they are involved with and um, they also interested interested in the community and the who on the rules um, under any of these stakeholders you'll find these kind of people so you have end users and these honestly we don't see them a lot but uh, I see them, the, they, may, they get benefits from the documentation that we may have in the community. So th that may benefit the users and also usability issues uh, impact directly end users. Then you have the business analysts. Business analysts are the people who uh, bridge the business need with the technical design. So these are the people to, to look what, what is needed to implement and work with the developer to actually build that those futures. This is a critical piece to implementing an ERP. So an ERP is not a technical component. It's, it's not a database. It's not an operating system. It's not a programming language. It's, it's something quite different. And arguably, uh, a lot of people, uh, might not like it, but I think uh, in an implementation, the business analysis component, it's more important than the actual development. So I think these are key people for us to be a successful community and they need to be highly involved for this to work. <clears throat> I think they do it even if indirectly because we see a lot of the developers, uh, but we can benefit having these people more directly involved in the community. And then we have the developers and we all, you all know that. So that's the most visible part, maybe because the output of all these processes is code and it's the also very tied to the origin of the community. So we are very strongly technical oriented. Although my message here, we, we don't want to be just a technical community. We want to be an all encompassing community. And then you have the managers. The managers are, can be the business managers, can be the uh, consulting managers, business owners, on, on any of those stakeholders. And their interest is, they have interested in, in, in that the community thrives because if you're a managing consultant, if you run a business uh, com company, it, it really runs down your costs. It makes it easier to find partners to meet the areas you, you don't have skills at. Uh, if you are a customer and you own a business, um, you probably rely a lot on the OCA modules and you like that you can get a lot of futures that basically for free, you don't have to pay thousands of dollars or euros to get them built. So that benefits directly your bottom line, your business. So you have direct interest here. So, uh, so managers are interested not only because of what the community provides code-wise, product-wise, but also uh, if you go to the consultants and customers, you can, it, it's a venue where you can get um, alliances and partnerships with others to help you achieve your customer goals. Because we're not, a lot of these consultant companies, these are not huge multinational companies. They are small companies with uh, some a few dozens or even less employees, but together we can actually perform globally and scale because we can work together with each other and complement each other's skills. So 
And when do you, uh, in your work process, when do you need to be involved in the community? So there, there, there are several things you can try, you, you may be doing. So you can be learning like hobbyists and students or evaluating like customers can be evaluating the product and the community helps you because there are some already features out of the box that may reduce your gaps and make it easier for you to select Odoo instead of other ERP. Um, yeah, at some point you are designing solutions. So you are deciding how do you solve those business needs and the community can go, can rescue you, you here because you can see all some futures there or you, you can even just ask around and uh, collaborate with other people and ask other people opinion. Has anyone else faced this same problem? What did you do? How did you solve it? So this is valuable. And then at the implementation, we go again to the developers building the code. So nothing new there. At the support phase, because if you, instead of having a private custom module, make it a, gener a more generic, a little more generic and publish the Zonosia model, odds are that it's also adopted by other people with the same business need and they help you maintain it. And they'll probably uh, do bug fixing for you for free and migrate to the next versions for you for free. And you'll probably be much more comfortable using it because you know, if it's other people are using it successful in production too, maybe this is a solid mature module and it's well built. Uh, when you do it privately, you'll be unsure if you made the right choices, if it's technically uh, um, a, a sound, implementation. So on the support stage, I think the benefit of working in the community is huge. And at some point you'll need to migrate again, that's uh, the same benefit I mentioned for the support. Uh, when you are migrating the systems, it's very good for you when you go to the community and find out that 60% or 80% of the models you use, they are, they are already migrated. So instead of having 100% of the effort, you have a fraction of that. Um, so that brings us to the bottom line. So what can you do for the community? My starting point here is that this is not only about contributing code. So that's the last topic I have there, implement. You can help implementing things. And uh, this is through GitHub pull requests. So that's the most visible part of the community, but that's not enough. And, and we shouldn't be happy stopping there. We need all the other things and we need strong contributions on all the other things. So how can you do it? Um, I, I have here pointers of how you can do and what you can do. Of course, some of these areas may not be mature and we may need to improve our processes and our tools for this. So, but this the community is also a work in progress, but it's a work in progress between everyone. The tools we have now were not built by the board members or by one or two, they were built by a lot of people. For sure, a lot of people who passed through the board were, were key on some of the current tools we have in, in the OCA, but it's, um, it's, it's not about individuals, it's a community and we, these tools are, are there for, because of the contributions that people made and they get, got out of their uh, daily jobs and they spent, they sacrificed some, several hours from their family time to help build these things. And uh, it's probably, it's not finished. There's more things to do. Now, going to the what you can do. So on the documentation side, we are lacking a lot. Uh, today, the main documentation point for modules is the readme files. They have actually a nice structure. Um, I can try here to show you. Okay, so here is an example. If I can bring this up here. So this is an example for this field service module. We actually have a good structure where we separate clearly the module description from the installation instructions, configuration, and the usage. The thing is, most of the time, this is written by the developer who creates the module. And, um, 
honestly, developers are not very good at documenting their own work. So this is, this is true. I speak for myself. At least when they're programming, they're in programming mode. They don't have the higher view to make a good explanation. So we need business analysts or users or people to um, help with this. This can be something that's improved after the model is merged. So there's always time to do this. Um, and another way to improve with the readme files is when you are designing the module, do your design documents in a way that it's easy for the developer to reuse pieces of text from the uh, design document and just copy paste it into the readme fragments of the module. If you do that, there's no extra work. You just organize your design document a, a little bit better and it will help your developer implementing it does not have to think about what he's going to write in the readme um, and he'll thank you for that. This is just easy to copy paste those pieces of text and you'll have a decent readme documentation. Um, okay, um, so this is not enough and we are thinking about if you can bring this to the, so this is a good start having the good readme documents, please uh, contribute and help. Um, but this is not enough. We need to make it easier for known developers because this contribution process is the same as for code and it's not easy for everyone. Uh, not everyone is familiar with Git flows. Uh, so we need to step this up and make this easier. So Maxime yesterday had a talk about the OCA uh, documentation platform and he showed a wiki based prototype he built and going to the next level it's something that's under discussion and ideas are appreciated on this okay but this is a very important thing uh, uh, for the community and it's something that we know it's not where it should be other thing we are a global community and we have participants from all places in the world and translation is an important piece of this because these people to be able to use the OCA models in their countries uh, um, they need to have them to, to be translated to their local languages and the OCA provides a service a translation service that uh, you can find at this address so this is an open source tool called Weblate and you have a user interface for translations that anyone can use. I think you need to send an email to an address, look it up in the OCA website to be able to um, uh, um, write or um, accept uh, translated texts and this is the exact the this is the website translations so this is the web late and see here I'm translating to Portuguese that's my native language and this is how it looks like so I'm proposing how to translate this string. Uh, there was a talk yesterday by Pedro Baeza. He also uh, at some point described a bit do's and don'ts on translating. So he gave advice. So you can look up that that uh, talk. And it actually uh, it has a lot of features. I'm not I'm not going to describe them here in detail. But you can easily it, it checks for consistency if the same word is being uh, translated the same way on several places. And so this is a collaborative, collaborative platform where you just use this and then this, these translations are pushed into the modules automatically through um, OCA tooling. There is a bot, a translation bot that takes care of that. And on the migration front, uh, developers can help do technical migration for modules. So this is different from 
uh, contributing new modules and there's also the open upgrade it's a bit harder to contribute there because it's a bit specific writing the uh, upgrading scripts uh, still this is a great tool and provides a lot of benefit to everyone this is a bit technical the OCA board has been doing an effort of funding every year and it's funding uh, the migration for the core components even if it's not 100 percent at least the core components like inventory and um, and um, accounting uh, sales we are uh, funding the migration for those components. Uh, the goal here is that we migrate our own Odoo instance, and in the process, we fund the scripts that then are available for the whole community. So we've been doing this successfully for the last years. Now, we rely on having uh, uh, the funding available in order to continue this. So that will take us to the next slide that's called Keeping the Lights On and I'll talk about that in a moment. So for support tasks, how can you help? So you can, finding bugs is helpful, opening e GitHub issues with a good description on how to reproduce the, the, those bugs is helpful. Uh, triaging bugs and discussing on bugs, even if you're not a developer, uh, trying to reproduce the errors reported there and discussing with the the person posting the issue is helpful. For developers, writing fixes and proposing GitHub uh, uh, pull requests for them is helpful. Forward porting, so a fix that was done for version 11, it may be still there for version 12 and 13. Forward porting or even backward porting these bug fixes, that's also helpful. Uh, writing tests or performing tests to these bugs or writing tests that reproduce the bug and then confirm that there are no, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the bug doesn't come up again in the future. Uh, that's, um, I, I'm missing the name right now. Um, Okay, then never mind. That, that's helpful. And doing the reviews and validating the pull requests and confirming that the bug is fixed, this is also helpful. So there are plenty of opportunities here for very different roles and skills. And then at the design side, uh, this is also something that you should do at the community side. So if you are trying to close a gap for a customer, and the customer can be yourself, of course. Um, if you're trying to close a gap, so the Odoo does not provide a feature that you identified you need, you can work on the design with the community. So there's been more than once where I uh, propose, so there's two ways for this. You can just make open questions on the mailing list and the contributors mailing list is probably a great place. Has any, anyone else found this issue? I don't believe I'm the only one who found this issue. I did my homework. I searched about it. I didn't find a solution. I recently had this case. So I, I had a requirement that the PO number in an invoice should be required for certain customers. And this is so basic. I don't believe there's not a module in the OCA for this, but there wasn't. And I asked around and people said, no, there's nothing there. But if we're going to do that, remember that uh, a lot of times it's not only about the PO number, it's about some documentation that's required. If you can, if you can incorporate this in your design, that would be great. And we did that. Then we implemented the module and I included that feature because it was probably also useful for my customer. Um, and the other thing that you can or should do is to open a request for comments issue. So before starting actual coding, when you're preparing your design, create a GitHub issue with your current design, your proposed design, and that will open a discussion. And there's been the case where I gave up on module implementations and replace them with uh, Odoo configuration because someone pointed out you can do this if you do this and this configuration and they were right and I have spared my customer a lot of money of implementing that module so this is also helpful ways to contribute and note that these two you don't need any technical skills okay so this is not only for developers that 
not only developers have contribution opportunities here. Um, finally, well, this is where I started. This everyone knows, GitHub pull requests. But let me underline one thing here, that's code reviews. So right now we have more pull requests than code reviews. Actually, for each pull request, we ideally should have two code reviews. This depends a bit on the module maturity, etc. But bottom line, we did more code reviews than pull requests. So for this to work, the rule of thumb is for each pull request you ask, make sure you do two reviews to someone else. And the second thing is code reviews. These are not really, uh, actually, this is not only code reviews that we need. So we need reviews for pull requests. And these don't have to be technical code reviews. These can be actual tests. So you'd, as a user, you can use runbot there's a link for the yoca runbot in the pull request and you just click you log in and you l read the usage section of the module try it out in runbot and see if it works as expected and that's a review and you can approve the pull request uh, or you can just uh, browse the module and see what's the structure being added there, what are the models, what is the logic, and from a functional point of view, say if that's, um, that makes sense, or maybe that's too much tied to a particular use case and should be more generic. So there's value on different perspectives on GitHub pull requests. Uh, what I, what I, my message here is that the pull request is not only a technical thing it's something anyone can do functional people can do end users can do so if you look at this there's a lot more here to that can be done by non-technical people than by technical people so um this is my message I, these are some broad pointers if, if you go into the oca website you'll find uh um, more details on this. If you have trouble with the OCA website and the information is not clear enough, please reach out to us or write to the contributors mailing, mailing list and point that out. We'll make an effort to improve that information for you. Okay. So finally, keeping the lights on. This community can only run. We need funding to have this community running. And also as important as funding, we need participation. So it's not only about the modules we provide and the pull requests and all those tasks I mentioned before. We need people to be members, to have a voice and be representative and have a weight when we discuss with uh, Odoo SA on their roadmap uh, and on their policies. Uh, we need sponsors. Sponsors help us support the costs for the servers and paying for this kind of events and funding for open upgrade. Um, we also launch uh, GitHub sponsors that individuals can uh, add with $5 per month, which is a very small fee. You can help uh, funding the open upgrade and the um, OCA tool set. And you'll get a, a nice button there so other people know you sponsored. And if you do that, I'll. It's for me easier for me to do a pull request, uh, a review for you than if you don't have that. <laughs> um, and more than that, please participate. So we have a delegate assembly. These people can and should candidate for board. We need renewal of board members. So please participate or just give your opinion and suggest improvements and uh, help on the organization of the OCA uh, as a whole. And so this is my presentation. I, I'm open for questions if we have time. I'm not sure. Thank you, Daniel. So uh, does anyone have any questions? We're a bit on time also, right? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So if anyone has any more questions, you can ask on the Discord support. Yes. Yes. Mention me on Discord, um, uh, and I'll ha be happy to answer your questions. I'll I'll be around uh, around the um, Discord through the day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daniel.